Hey everybody, here's Oakland's Amy Allison, uh, now of her firm She the People, talking about Trump and the politics of race and racism and Trump, the Trump racist poll. She the People, a national network that works to elevate the political power of women of color. She's also the president of Democracy in Color, a political organization that focuses on racial issues. Amy, thanks for joining us on this incredibly important uh, conversation. People have said that something the president knows how to do very well uh, is rally his base when it comes to race, which includes stoking fears and deepening the divide in this country. How do Democrats address the issue of racism in this country without simply making this about President Trump, without attacking what the president puts out there on Twitter, what he says about the freshman congresswoman, and really making it about racism? Because with or without Trump, racism is and has been a problem in this country. You're bringing up a great point, and um, racism it's been around for a long time and has been used as a tool in politics. Trump is consolidating his largely white base that is uh, ha shares a worldview that would allow him to attack people of color. But the reason why that poll shows such a distinction between Democrats and Republicans mm. is I gotta remind you, you know, the, the, the Democrats are half people of color, 25% uh, black, a quarter women of color, that's where the people of color are. and. The experience that people have, it's not just, you know, uh, Trump mouthing racist attacks on uh, black Congress uh, people. It, it, it's a whole system that affects um, housing and it affects health care and education. And that's the experience that's defined uh, people of color in this country. And so, uh, you know, racism is a tool. It's, there's no doubt about it. It's going to consolidate and uh, it, it may even increase turnout as a, on the part of the GOP using racism, and it will also increase turnout on the part of the Democrats. I think the challenges for uh, leaders yeah. who want to help us see through this area is how can we articulate racial justice as being a kitchen table issue in this day, the leading issue for us to uh, attack and do it in a multiracial way. So you talk about the diversity of the candidates uh, running for president, um, uh, the Democratic candidates running for president, but if you look at the stage tonight, it's going to be all white candidates standing up there. How do the optics play for the Democrats tonight? On that stage. Not too good. <laughs> Not too good. I, I, I really think whoever comes up with the strategy of, of having candidates debate the issues needs to always be thinking about not only who the base of the Democrats are, but um, how the diversity in terms of not just gender, but race really plays out. We saw how important it was to have, uh, for example, Senator Harris and, mm -hmm. and uh, Joe Biden on the stage at the same time to, to really tease out some of the key issues. I think uh, those of us who are trying to weigh which candidate will be able to face Trump, his white nationalist and racist language, as well as uh, what uh, policy positions are appealing, really want to see that diversity on the stage. It was a big miss for the Democratic Party. You talk first about um, turning the conversation about racism into a kitchen table issue and how, in fact, candidates can go about doing that. So I ask you, how can they go about doing that? And to follow that up with, can the conversation about racism, if they are able to turn this into a, a, a kitchen table issue, even if it's not affecting um, every single voter, if there's a voter at home who's saying, look, this isn't directly affecting me, but I still care about it, obviously, because it affects my friend or, or my neighbor, um, can it stoke vo voter turnout for the Democrats? Can it inspire people to go to the polls uh, in 2020 like it didn't necessarily do in 2016? Yeah. I. I, I always remind people that the only Democrats uh, the president that, that uh, has been elected president the last 20 years was Barack Obama, and in large part because he spoke the language of racial solidarity and he mm -hmm. was able to really build a coalition that was multiracial. There's a role for all of us in a multiracial coalition uh, that evolves beyond the, the hatred that Trump represents and a part of, of the country which is really going, we, we hope will go away. And instead, for us to find a politics that we that brings us together across race, it's really the only way forward for us. And uh, that then becomes the frame where we look at a lot of issues. I mean, if there's a student loan um, policy platform or Medicare or, or universal health care, yeah. you know, point out how uh, race and the system of racism has impacted people's experience and their ability to access government, you know, uh, uh, services like this. 
and talk about that solution in the frame of race, that's the way to both appeal to and talk about a solution that's going to mm. uh, benefit all communities. All right, Amy Allison, thank you. Great talking to you. Uh, and so that was, uh, hey folks, just a, a, a note, Amy, 12 years ago, ran for Oakland City Council District 2 race and, um, and fortunately did not win. Uh, that was against Pat Kernahan. Uh, and then she tried for at large as well and started She the People, I believe now a year and a half, uh, two years ago. And it's an organization committed to um, the advancement of women in politics, women candidates. So um, there you go. And subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube.